So, you know, Kershaw is back, and, and that's great news, and we've been hearing all about his velocity, and we know it's diminished. We understand that. But what do you really expect now from him going forward, Mark? Well, you look at Clayton Kershaw, maybe the back half of his career and, and not the Cy Young Award guy because he's gone through a lot of injuries. Yeah. And if Clayton Kershaw tonight is going to be good, he's going to, you're going to have to look for his secondary stuff. And it has a Three lot to do over. with that slider. The slider is what he gave the home run up to, Yasiel Puig. It's not that finish. He didn't have spring training this year, so you're wondering if that's going to be there. We've seen a good curveball, but you're wondering if Kershaw is that same guy anymore because of all of those injuries, because of not having spring training. Uh, I worry about Clayton because of all of the bullets that he's thrown, but this is a guy that's always relied on four-pitch mix and if he d didn't have one that night, he still could dominate a lineup. Well, not, Mr. Spring training is big for a starting pitch of his caliber. But one thing about him, he has the ability to pitch and pitch at a high level. And you, and you said it, he mixes four pitches now. When he's at his best, he had two pitches, basically, to get you out. And now he's pitching with four pitches. I don't worry about Clayton Kershaw because he's going to find a way to get it done. If you think about the injury history that you, that you have with Clayton Kershaw, a lot of it's back. And then a, he, so many times he's been through there, the shoulder, the bicep, two back DLs, and now the shoulder. Too much injury. And plus, they, they ended up serving up that contract to him last mm -hmm. year. For Clayton Kershaw, I think the comp is a Zach Greinke. If you look at Zach Greinke, that velocity is dipped down. The differentials are very similar to the secondary stuff with the fastball. So it makes it a little bit easier for the offensive guys to make those adjustments against. How him. much easier, Frank? If you're taking, if you, if his fastball is at 89, it's sitting at 89, 90 tonight. If his fastball is there, how much easier is it for you to deal with the other? Well, stuff? I mean, I think you're able to sit back on the breaking ball more because you're not worried about the fastball blowing by you. But what's going to be key with him is going to be that cut, that cutter. He's going to have to do that hard slider, cut her down and in to keep guys on as they don't make his fastball better. All right, we'll keep watching Kershaw tonight making his debut, but it's Reds with a 2-1 lead in L.A. Um, this is a bad start. This is a bad, this is a bad start. They're 6-11 they're right now. They just don't look good. So is this simply World Series hangover for you? I think it's fatigue. I mean, their pitching staff, they've just been up and down. Uh, Chris Sell looks a little, a little hurt. I I'm not saying he's hurt, but uh, he's not himself. And it starts with your ace. And he's been bad every outing so far this year. Uh, I just think this team is it's not a hangover. I think it's fatigue playing late in October. Uh, everything went perfect for this team last year. They hit on, I mean, every day they were hitting line drives, winning big ball games. They played incredible defense, and they pitched well from starting staff to the bullpen. When everything goes perfect like this, the next year you can't expect that because baseball is a different season every year. Yeah, and I think it is a hangover because if you think of it, the, the way they started the season last year, they started 17-2 and two mm. and just, uh, just rolled the rest of the year. Everything went perfectly, as Frank talked about. I think this is the first adversity Alex Cora is doing, and it's ever had. So it's a test for him. He's already built that trust factor in the locker room. So I don't worry about this team moving forward, but I do worry about Chris Sale, and I also worry about Mookie Betts. And he was even commenting today about the way he has started. 222 batting average, three home runs, seven RBIs. This is the MVP, and he did everything right last year. Can he... Jump on and, and have a hot stretch? Yes, of course. We all expect it because of what he puts into his craft. But when you are struggling, you look to your stars to get yourself out of it. And I think Mookie Betts is going to right the ship. And then you're going to not talk about the hangover that's going on mm -hmm. now. You're going to say this is the talented team that is going to be where they're supposed to be. Frank, so we've seen Yelich and what he's doing to start mm -hmm. the year. When you, and look, again, it still is a small sample size. But mm -hmm. when you win an MVP, as you have done, mm -hmm. How hard is it to now, now that the bar is up here, to say, oh, well, that's the new bar, right? Well, especially playing in a place like Boston. That's the bar. You've set it high. League MVP, you did everything, won a Baden title, and then you come out and start at like 220. People look at you like, whoa, whoa, you're not getting it done. I mean, baseball is year to year. Mookie Best is an incredible player. He's going to figure it out. He's going to figure it out fast. And you think about it, too. I, I, I mean, I spent a lot of time watching stars like Frank Thomas. That, and they set the bar, but they had expectation the next year. Even if they went through struggles, they had expectations that they were going to have their numbers. At the end of the year, it was going to be where it's at. I think Mookie, Bat Mookie Betts is at that point in his career, and he's that star that has that expectation. That's why he's disappointed. Yeah, and mix, mix in this, the Red Sox starting staff ERA is 7.1. Wow. That is not going to get it not done. Get so it done. that's got to get better.